supported that because I feel like to ghettoize the Chicago artists doesn't do them any favors either. But then there is that lack of, well, then you don't necessarily know they're a Chicago yeah. artist if you don't know it, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, but I'm always cu curious, like the, the Getty just started in two, three, three, maybe four years ago, um, an initiative about uh, historical LA. I mean, there are many, there are you know, several chapters to, um, but to spoke, focus specifically on LA's art history, because the question became, where does where does this information reside? Who 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 knows? You know, and this isn't just like the highlights. You know, like a Ferris Gallery, or then you know a John Baldessari, or an Alan Capra, and those kinds of those kinds of stories, which have become part of a larger sort of national art history, I would argue. But it's specifically like it's like regionalist LA. Kind of a thing, and like, say, like you know, the birth of the cool catalog. If you've looked at oh, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a fantastic regional history yeah. painting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Project. And they say, and, and I mean, I know at the Chicago Historical Society, they just had the show of of of, of big, painters, big painting. Yeah, but I, I was, you know, curious, Lynn, how you felt, or even Paul, about the, you know the issue of you one point being on the you know the, the issue of a Chicago museum about where. where if I wanted to know about Tojo's Geller or, or, you know, wanted to go back to the 30s, the 40s, where that, that, that information seems like it, it, it's, it's, um, it's locked up somewhere. You go to Corbett somewhere. versus Dempsey. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but where, or Valerie Carberry. You know, but where Dempsey. do you, um, where does it reside and where do you think it ought to reside in a sense? Paul, do you yeah. want to talk about... I mean, I think you need a repository. I think there's a reason people live here, and I, <clears throat> I think it'd be a good idea to be able to augment that and show people that information. You know, I was instrumental in getting the 12 by 12 show started. Am I thrilled with how it's worked out? No, but I mean, I think it's been better than not. And I think that, you know, I mean, so many artists in Chicago today are not aware of the history that we've been alluding to. A <laughs> hundred years or more of artists defining themselves, do I stay or do I go? Is New York matter to me? You know, et cetera. Um, I think it's important to look at that stuff so that artists today can progress through their issues more quickly than if they <laughs> have to repeat those Keep mistakes. Keep the wheel. <laughs> It's yeah. Over and over again, that's what's happening here. No, and I, you that's, know. that's true. That, that's absolutely what I saw when I was doing research for Art in Chicago, is how many alternative space and artist groups doing stuff in their you know, basements, like today, who the current people have no idea about and have to exactly reinvent the wheel every generation. So or, is that an okay, or is that an okay model? You know, in a certain sense. I think it's inefficient. I think it's I okay, think, but it's certainly not efficient. I think it's inefficient, too. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. How do you feel, Elizabeth, yeah. about, you know? Um, about, well, I don't, I mean, I don't think that Three Walls is reinventing a wheel, necessarily. I mean, I think it's, a, it's an alternative art space in the tradition of alternative art spaces from the 70s, but we don't think of ourselves as um, a new model. I mean, I, I mean we, Three Walls never... Never was like. I don't, think, I don't think he's asking about three walls per se. I mean, but take a look at all the alternative galleries and all the artists that are reinventing the wheel. Some of whom you show. <laughs> well, I mean, I just you know, I, I, I don't know. I think that there's. I think that there. As we're talking about like a diversity of practice, I think that there, um, a healthy art community has a diversity of kinds of spaces, and. I think that, like, my, I don't know, my feeling is that there should just be more and more and more a, a little bit because I, th I think that there's an imbalance of um, artists to art spaces. I think that there's a lot of really interesting programming happening. I and mean, as you were saying, sort of the margins are more central in some ways. Like, I think that, um, I mean, you know, Roots and Culture is doing really interesting things. Herald Arts has developed a really interesting program. Um, Incubate. Is, is, is a brand new space that's doing interesting things and all of them um, are extremely different from one another. So I think that, I think that there just could, I, I don't know if I think that any of them are reinventing the wheel, but you know, I've been in Chicago for five years, so. <laughs> and, I, and there's no uh, repository to go to. Actually, one of the institutions I've always encouraged to be the repository is the Smart Museum, because I mean, 
uh, they, are, they have a very strong collection in Chicago art, and also the fact that sociology and all that got started at, on this campus, the idea of, of really looking at that question, what's the relationship between place and creative product would be a really interesting question for a place like the University of Chicago just to take on and make, make their own. Um, yeah, one of the problems at the MCA is that our mission does keep us very contemporary, so things much before 1945, whether they're Chicago or elsewhere, are just not what right. we're going to be showing. So to, to honestly represent the entire history, which I think the pre-war history is, is very apropos, um, it, it can't happen at MCA as we're currently constituted. Mm -hmm. And we have such a focus on supporting artists who are doing whatever they're doing now, um, that the collection, which should support more of the historical context, uh, tends not to do that either. Although I, I definitely recognize that, especially for out-of-town people, they, they'd love to come and see, you know, some kind of feeling of the town as opposed to, you know, yet another Richard Serra or Gabrielle Rothko or whoever, that they can see pretty much anywhere else in the world, but they, they can't necessarily see the local um, art history anywhere else in the world except you know, maybe at the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, that, is that where that show was mounted? The, uh, art, the other art in Chicago show was yeah, mounted okay, there. Yeah. Cool, yeah. I, think I've, I've I can't the believe they used the same name as my show, but um, it, it's, it's, or the Smithsonian actually has a pretty interesting collection. The Smithsonian Museum of American Art, as it's now called. My sense is, is that our ability to retain information is about 100 years, and that our, at least that's as far back as I can go. You know, I can go back to 1913, and I can trace that everybody's repeating everything. When I'm really, I'm into mentoring, and I'm not seeing a lot of men, potential mentees as eager about it as there are potential mentors, certainly in this room, <laughs> you know, and there's an awful lot of older farts who have the ability to share information and knowledge about things that aren't right there in the textbooks that peers and, you know, new kids are totally dealing with today. You know, and if we look at, you know, like, Obama's being sworn in with Lincoln's Bible, but, you know, somebody had to go find out how often it's been used, etc. It's really hard to get old information, but, you know, I think we need to take advantage of our, you know, the people in our society who know it, most of whom have the time and ability to share it. Yeah, uh, and actually that, uh, something I wanted to say is that the history as it is here in Chicago, is extremely fragmented among institutions. I mean, the SMART uh, certainly has it. The High Park Art Center's history is amazing. Um, the Harold Washington Library Special Collections has an amazing uh, repository of Chicago art history. But yeah, the Chicago History Museum has a certain type of painting that they've collected over the years. But yeah, there is no one central place where you can kind of go and see it all. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so Suzanne has asked me to speak specifically on behalf of the Renaissance Society, <laughs> its role. Yeah, I've, I use that book all the time, the seven, for 75 years, was it? For 75 years, yeah. Yeah, but certainly as a, as, a, as a membership organization, even early on in the history, if you went through those membership shows, the number of Chicago-based artists who passed through, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. In fact, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, somebody called to ask specifically about this list of artists, and I was sad to say I couldn't give them more information about them. And they were saying, oh, I think they're from Chicago, though. I think they're from Chicago. Um, but I know is, you know, even over your years, Suzanne, just the number of monographic exhibitions of Chicago artists is quite substantial, I mean, given these were the first kind of solo shows, even of the images in some sense, where they were thought of as a group, parceling them out as individuals and then giving them shows and giving them, again, uh, uh, their first catalogs. Uh, I know it's a substantial part of our history, and, you know, in a lot of respects. I don't know if people think of the Renaissance Society and they think of regionalist art history as the first thing that comes to their mind. But in another case, you could go through and call out, actually come up with a sizable um, document of what's happened in Chicago at least over the last, take a guess and say 30, 30, 35, 40 years. 